So today I'm going to give you 10 crops that you can grow right now in the month of June. Let's jump into it. Hi friends, welcome home. I hope you're blessed and doing well because I'm doing great. Welcome back to the garden. So we're going to jump into 10 crops that you can be growing right now in the month of June and I'm right here next to one of them. Kale happens to be one of my staple crops. I grow it every season. It is just a reliable grain to grow in your garden. This one happens to be the Thousand Head Kale. You all were with me when I sowed this one. I like this one. This was actually a new variety for me this season and I wanted to grow it because it was known to have really, really large leaves. Now, I have seen even larger leaves. And of course, I know that if I were to space them out a little bit more, then this plant could get a lot larger. But that is not bad for a leaf, like leafy green. I love it. So this will be a really good crop for me. I'm gonna grow this one every single season in my garden. So other kales that you can grow in your garden are curly kale. I love growing that one, especially for salads. And I grow the red Russian kale that I have right here behind me and premier kale. So there's so many different types and varieties of kales that you could be growing in your garden to get your high nutritional value out of your greens. So another really nice staple crop I like to grow in my garden is sweet potatoes. A couple of months back, I decided to pop some sweet potatoes into this raised bed here. And it took them a couple of months to kind of get going, but I barely covered them over and started my sweet potato slips. So here they are. Here are my sweet potato slips that I've started in the bed here. And as you can see, they're really healthy and really, really strong coming out of the plants. Let's see if I can show you. So there's one there. And I covered, some of them were halfway in the ground and some of them down in there. You can see that. And I just barely covered them over and they have definitely shot off some sweet potato slips for me. So what I'm going to do is just pull the slips out, just like that. Let me shake it off because it had little ants in there. But I'm just gonna pull the slips out just like this and plant them in the ground. So this is two slips that I have right here. And that's it. And you, have, you can have you some wonderful sweet potatoes as well. So typically you grow potatoes all the way up to late May. Good June, it gives me that window in zone 8A where I can still plant out potatoes. I had some containers laying around and I had a few more bags of potatoes that I didn't get planted. So I'm gonna go ahead and pot them in these containers today. So I have some russets here and then I had a few more of the potatoes that I cut and I let them heal over and they started to chit out there. So I'm gonna plant those in as well for a late fall harvest. I'm gonna add some of my chicken manure to this container as well and mix it in and we'll be good to grow. This is my homemade compost. This is chicken manure and food scraps. And I'm just gonna break it up because it was kind of dry. And I'm just gonna mix it in well. I'm gonna plant these potatoes, which I'm not gonna cut these like I did this one. These I'm gonna keep whole. And these, as you can see, I did cut those. And they calloused over and healed over before I planted them in. But all of the other ones that I don't have room for in these containers, I'm just gonna plant them out in the garden so that they don't go to waste. Let's see. I'm gonna plant these about four inches deep. Let's mix this compost in real good. And I have various size containers. I just wanted to put these containers to use because 
These containers came from my fruit trees that I recently planted out. And why not put them to use? They're great growing containers. They're really nice and large and deep. And I should be able to lift them really easily. Um, I should be able to lift them really easily and dump them out. And the container is really large. You have to be able to handle that size container. All right. Let's finish getting all tucked in. It's really, it's really hot and really dry in here. So um, hopefully we'll get some rain today. We're supposed to get rain, but. You never know. I'm in Georgia and Georgia weather is really unpredictable. We'll, they'll say we're getting rain and we won't get rain. So I never count on it. So I'm gonna show you two methods. I'm gonna be planting my potatoes. So I have my sprouted potatoes here and I'm gonna plant my potato with the sprouts facing up. I have at least a 12 inch container so that the potatoes have enough space to grow and multiply in the container. And this one here is a, look at that. It is just raring to go. So I'm just gonna place one in each container because I want large size cont uh, potatoes. If I wanted maybe like some little smaller ones, I would add another one in here, but I want my potatoes to be pretty large. And my remaining potatoes, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna plant those in the ground. So I'm gonna plant the potatoes at least three to four inches below the surface of the soil here. And then I'll just cover them over. So I'll come, um, come back and finish filling that container there and cover that potato over as well. So there we go. And let's break up that compost. And my compost is mixed with my native soil, which is Georgia red clay. So we just dig down in there and give it about three to four inches. Place it down in there and cover it up. As you can see, you know, we have some dried eggshells in there. And I'll come back and we'll cover it over. So all of our potatoes are all planted in. So the last thing to do is to water them in and we're gonna sit back and we're gonna watch them grow. So I'm gonna go on over to the garden and I'm gonna plant the rest of them in the ground. All right, so here I am at my potato row and I'm gonna go ahead and get these potatoes sown in the ground. I'm just gonna dig a little trench. Turning my um, healed over cut side down.
All right, so now that we have our potatoes planted in, now we can move on to our next vegetable. So our next one is the tomatillo. So the tomatillo is a really good one to grow in your garden because once you grow a tomatillo in your garden, you won't have to grow another one because they self sow really, really easily. So if one or two of your tomatillos fall on the ground, guarantee the next season, they are going to come back up for you. I rarely have to grow tomatillos because I always get a nice crop of them. I actually get a lot more of them, but I think because I redesigned and reworked this bed this season, I may have buried a lot of them really, really deep. So I do have one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is a little bitty baby one right here. Six plants that I did not have to grow. They grew all on their own. And this one right here is already set in fruit. So definitely grow tomatillos. Tomatillos are delicious. I love making salsa verde and it is absolutely delicious. So tomatillos, another one to add to your garden. So fennel is a really good vegetable to grow in your garden. I let it stay in my garden and reseed itself every single season. Um, it literally acts like a perennial in my garden because they don't die. They really don't. They last a long time and <laughs> they'll eventually die out, but they will last season after season and they'll reseed in your garden. So what I'm letting this one do is I'm letting this one go to seed so that I can harvest the fennel seed. Fennel is really great for your digestive system and it helps with your gut health or if you have any type of constipation issues um, or anything like that. Fennel tea is really good to help ease the pain in your stomach or bloating in your stomach. Fennel, or fennel tea is really good for that. But eating fennel in your dishes, anti-inflammatory, really, really great vegetable to grow in your garden. So I love the way it looks in my garden, but I also like the health benefits that come with growing fennel. So grow you some fennel. I absolutely love growing broccoli in my garden. Um, I've gotten a really a nice broccoli harvest um, this season, and this is my second round of broccoli. And I love preserving the broccoli, and I love cooking with it. It is delicious and nutritious for you. An excellent crop to get started for your fall crop is broccoli. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Really great vegetables to grow and harvest for the fall. These love the cool weather, but in a, our growing zone, we do have a longer growing season. So we'll be able to get another harvest of these brassicas later on in the fall. So this is my second crop and I'm going to um, go ahead and start another round of my broccoli, my cauliflower and my cabbage. Um, to harvest in the fall with the rest of my greens. Um, these are already starting to put on some broccoli heads and I'm really looking forward to it. So my last broccoli harvest, I was able to get quite a bit of beautiful broccoli heads. So this is one of those staple crops that you can add in your garden. The leaves are edible and um, the stems. So, I mean, the whole plant is edible, but the woody part is the bigger part of the stem so you wouldn't want to eat that you want to maybe break that down and compost that but the stems um, up near the top part of the stems you can add that in your um, cooking and your dishes and it acts as a really nice really nice green growing different squash varieties in your garden during this time of the season is a really good idea let me show you some examples you can enjoy your summer squash like your zucchinis right now this is a not this is a really good time to maybe get another crop of your squash in and also your winter squash so this is a really great time to start sowing your winter squash varieties as well so today I'm going to be sowing some more of my winter squash um, and I planted them over in this particular bed. I still have some more work to do over there, still putting some things in and I'll more than likely sow some in the garden as well. So winter squash and steal your summer squash. So another really good staple crop to add to your garden this season 
is beans. I'm gonna be growing the Triumphal Violetto on my on my trellis here. Um, it is a climbing variety. I'm gonna be also growing some bush varieties as well, but this is really good when you have limited space. You can always grow vertically. All right, so it's really easy to grow beans. I'm literally gonna pop in the beans with my finger and just pop them in. And they'll be up out of the ground in about really three to four days. They don't take long at all. Um, you can soak your beans, but I usually don't because I don't want my beans to rot in the ground. So I literally just sow them straight into the garden. And I put about two beans per seed hole. And that is it. Beans are great for long-term storage and they are a really good staple crop when you're needing an emergency food crop. So I'm gonna definitely add some additional beans. I'm really excited to be growing um, a variety of bean that I've never grown before. It is a pink bush bean, <laughs> I believe it's called, but I'm so excited about it. I wanna be planting that one in today too, and I'm gonna show you all in another video what that one is gonna be looking like. Let's jump into our last, but certainly not least, this one happens to be a flower to grow. All right, so here we are. We're standing next to the sunflower, and this sunflower is getting tall. So I'm about five, six, just five, seven-ish, something like that. And this flower is already over five feet tall. So it is amazing. These varieties, the giant varieties, can get up to 12, 15 feet in the air. Um, you have some skyscraper varieties, but some flowers are really great to go, grow because the petals are edible and medicinal. The seeds are edible and they're amazing for you, for health. So definitely grow some sunflowers and also because they are absolutely beautiful in your garden the birds love the seeds so you'll be feeding your wildlife as well you can let a few sunflowers stay on the um, on the plant the seeds let the seeds drop dry out and let the birds feed from it and then when the birds feed from it they will drop the seeds on the ground and you will have some volunteer sunflowers the next season so i hope these vegetables beans and flowers have been helpful for you in thinking about what you could be growing in your June garden as well. And if they have, give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you let me know in the comment section down below what vegetables, fruit, veg, herbs, and flowers you're growing in your June garden. I would love to know. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye.